Hi, my name is uh, Melissa Dalmeida, and I'm from the Barony of Glamere in um, the Kingdom of Ontier, um, known as Olympia, Washington, United States. And today we're going to look at trouble printing block print, uh, trouble shooting block printing. Um, so uh, ideally, you have some vague idea that you're going to block print things, and you might have a block print and you might have ink, and now you are ready to block print, and you want to get the perfect images, or maybe you are ready to carve your own block printing things using um, the speedball um, pink stuff, it's called speedy carve, um, or you're gonna use linoleum, or you have a really awesome um, laser jet printer and you can print them yourself um, or whatever it is and so now you need to print. Um, so this is the the nitty-gritty of it kind of the block prints um, because block printing is essentially stamping you know it's it's just like painting your hand and putting it up on a wall we've been doing it that way for eons and honestly not much has changed. It's just getting that nitty gritty down. Um, so I very carefully, um, just before this class started, um, carved a tiny little heart that for us so we can see, um, so that you can see the benefits of things like the speedball, um, speedy carve stuff. The neat stuff about it is that you can trim it with scissors, um, which is very nice. So when you are carving your own block prints, you want to make sure that you have um, not a lot of excess around the edges. So unlike modern stamps that have a, a large surface to hold on to, um, you, you can always attach it to something that gives you a surface. Um, so when I, when I carved this one, we added a wood base to it. Um, but the, the stamp itself doesn't have anything in this negative space. So you want to make it as clean a stamp as you can make it. Um, you want to make sure that you are carving it deep enough that you don't have any raised edges. And one of the ways that you can go through and check all of that is going to be to do test prints. So that's um, definitely going to be something that we're going to do in this little demo here. Um, I highly recommend that if you are doing any kind of historic block printing and you want to do it based in the Middle Ages or earlier, um, that you check out the Facebook page. Um, it is called Textile Print or Printing Textiles in the Middle Ages. Disa will put it up on the chat for us all to see. Um, and it is a, or there you go, Printing Textiles in the Middle Ages. It is a fabulous resource. There are tons of articles, um, ANS papers, uh, neat research experiments that people have done, how to tell fake period block prints from real period block prints. I didn't know that there were forgeries of those, but apparently there are. Um, so it's got lots of great resources, it's lots of fun. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is ink. What kind of ink do you use when you block print? When I first started block printing, I got um, from Michaels the fabulous silk screen ink and it comes in these jars this one was a four set it came with the three primary colors and black um later i purchased online the um ink set this one comes with uh six colors or sorry yeah six colors it is the three primary black white and gold and this one is specifically for block printing now, you have to remember that when most of the rest of the modern world talks about block printing, they are talking about doing things on paper. So they are talking about inking a stamp, putting it on paper, pressing it with a press, and then peeling the stamp or the paper off. Because usually when they're doing it with paper, the way that this works is I have a stamp, I ink the stamp, I lay the paper on top of the stamp, I press everything, I peel the paper off, I have a beautiful image. 
when you do it with fabric, which is mostly what I'm talking about today, is because um, I do mostly tech block printing on fabric because that's how I recognize it mostly in the Middle Ages. Like they did do um, block prints that were paper. That's how they did leaflets and stuff like that before the printing press. But um, I don't embroider. That's not what I do. So in order to decorate my garb, I do it with block prints. I do it with block printing. And so this has been a thing that I do. Uh, so because I've done so well with it, I do get lots of people asking questions. So inks, you can use things like um, the metallic puff paints. You can do things like, um, you know, just regular black acrylic. You can do things like, um, you know, so I got a big thing of a regular acrylic paint. Um, apparently you can use actual house paint and it works great. I haven't tried it yet. I will let you know the details. Um, so when you do paint, I'm gonna go through and get my things. There are two ways that you can do paints. I'm switching my camera. You can do your paints as a roller or you can do paints as a stamp pad. Um, I don't do the stamp pads, but I might for this summer, well, next summer, for the crafting eventing season um, because I will do, um, it uh, saves really well. So when you are doing um, stamp pads, you take a Tupperware container and um, the, the Tupperware container will work for, you put a piece of felt in it and then you put the ink on top of it and then it works great. Or you can use um, a roller pin. So I do the rollers and you just buy them in sets where you have the, the paint rollers. Okay. And then, um, and then when you're done painting with them, you save them and they work really well in plastic baggies. And if you need to recharge them, you can recharge them or you throw them away when they're, when they're out of use. So I'm going to take my, whoop, oops, roller. I throw it on the ground. And um, so I have a roller. Um, and I'm going to do a black ink today because it makes it really easy to see because we're on camera. Um, one of the disadvantages to the silk screen ink is that it comes in this fabulous jar, which is super convenient for getting ink out of. So thankfully, I have a little palette knife that was just kind of lying around that I could go through and find. So you scoop some ink on there, and I didn't use a whole bunch, but then you want to get your even texture all the way across. Um, you can use a brayer, B-R-E-R-A-Y-E-R, -E -E which is the, the official block printing tool that is basically like a rubber roller. Um, and I, you can tell that on my, my roller, I don't have enough ink. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, and that works great. The pro challenge with the brayers is that you have to clean it between each paint type. Um, which, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I want to do more than one color or I want to do lots of things or all of that. Okay. So, now that I have the ink on here, I have just about the right amount of ink. And I don't know if you can tell, I'm gonna be quiet here for a second, but you're looking for that tacky sound when you roll your ink. So I'm gonna be quiet and, can you hear that, that tackiness? So, um, and you want it to be a little bit stippled, right? So it's not super heavy, it's pretty even all the way across. Um, and then you roller this, your roller pin, onto your stamp. Then you will get your fingers a little goopy. Ooh, I carved that. And you can already tell that I did not carve deep enough inside of the centerpiece because you can see the little bit of sketchy edges because I didn't carve that deep enough. But this is why test prints are important. So that way you can go through and test what you're printing. 
So then I pull out my sister's pad of paper that was lying around and we're going to test it. So that came out pretty good. Um, I have a little bit of raised pieces that you can see there at the, the top of the heart and just under the curly Q and along the sides. So I know that I need to go through and I need to trim that down before I can get a good print that I want to do on fabric. Um, because I'm using the speedy print, this means that I can use um, one of these, which comes in a kit, again, from um, my, Michael's or your regular craft store here in the US. Um, and they come with little head pieces. Um, and so I'm just going to go through and trim one of these suckers down. Oh, this one. And, um, and when you first are, are deciding what it is that you're doing, you, you are going to do a little bit of extra work. So I'm going to trim this piece off here because we knew that that needed to go. Um, I use water-based inks instead of latex or instead of oil-based, mostly because I want easy cleanup. This is how I run my life. I want it to be as easy cleanup as possible. Um, and oil-based inks, um, A, they require 24 hours to dry on any fabric that you're printing them on. B, you need to have special tools in order to clean them up. Um, and um, if you want to do any additional colors or anything else like that on a garment, uh, you know, it's going to take multiple passes. And I oftentimes don't have enough room in my house to have fabric lying around for 24 hours. I have fuzzy sea monsters, also known as cats, that will get on everything. Um, so that's how that goes. All right, so we trimmed out the middle bits a little bit. Right there. Okay. So, give that a good roller. Get it on my block print. Pick up those actual pieces of ink. And stamp it down. Oh, and that one looks pretty good. So um, this one was not quite an even uh, print. So the second one here, because I, I didn't, I don't have a smooth edge here on this side, um, and it's a little wooby over here. But um, the high places that I was worried about are no longer there. So I know now that this is a good stamp. Excellent. I'm going to use that. I've got all of my ink. I'm going to set this one aside. Use back here. Okay, um, so now that we've got our ink figured out and we've got our stamp figured out, we need to worry about our stamping surface. Now, I have this lovely wood table that is, you know, flat and level and though there might be a seam right here because there's a leaf inside of the table, you know, that shouldn't be too noticeable, but, um, one of the things is, is that when you are doing block printing and you're on paper, usually you're putting all of your pressure, like I said, on top of this so that we have a stamp and then you are stamping on top of that. So you can get a variety of pressures that you can put down. And there's oftentimes some tools that you can use to get that. But when you're doing the reverse, you're putting the, the inked surface onto the surface that you're stamping on top of. And so that is, in this case, this is a, a, it looks like wood, it's actually some kind of plastic. So this is a hard plastic surface going onto a hard plastic surface. So there's very little give in any direction. So what we need to, um, that's another reason why I like the Speedy Carve because it, the stamp itself has some flexibility and give to it, which, in some ways make it easier to, to stamp because, hey, I don't have to worry about, am I covering all of that surface area? So 
one of the things that I have found is that I can't have just a flat surface. I oftentimes want to have a few layers of stuff. So I, um, very carefully so I'm pushing this aside over here. I have, this is my homemade cutting board and it is um, cardboard wrapped with uh, quilt batting and then wrapped in a paper and wrapped in a pillowcase. So this is my homemade ironing board. It's um, very small. It's got a little flex to it. The pillowcase has a unicorn on it. I, my camera doesn't go, go that high. Um, and so, but this will have a little bit of give to it, right? You know, there's a little bit of push back and give. So that's great. Awesome. And then I can go through and I can put a, um, as I'm kind of adjusting stuff that's around the table here. Then I wanna put a surface that I'm not going to get any weird background stuff from. So I have a smaller-ish cutting mat that I'm gonna put on top. And the cutting mat also has a little bit of give to it, which is good. And then because we're still doing test prints, I have my piece of paper because I want to make sure that this is a good surface for me to do on um, my thing before I get into my nice fabric. Okay, so work that up. Grab this here. Roller on the heart. And when I roller it on, I want to make sure I'm getting all of the edges because um, I can kind of see when it's all covered up because you can see that there is, it's all inked and there's no areas that are less than any others. And so then I just lay it down um, and there's a lot of give here, which is good. So then we end up with the stamp. Ooh. And so that's, that's a pretty good image. Um, this one's a little not even, and I might have been pressing too hard. I might not have an even um, edge on where I cut it out. Um, let's look at one of my other stamps. This one's a little bit bigger, but it lends itself to, to good demonstration purposes because I can see where I've covered it all you know, and being Greek, having some kind of Greek leaf motif is always appropriate. Right there. All right. So I've stamped this. And as I'm stamping it, I'm feeling like, well, that's actually pretty good. Um, my base might be a little too loose, right? Um, but that's a pretty good image, right? Um, but it's a little splotchy in some places. So I'm not getting good even coverage. So I'm actually gonna take my cutting board or my mat out from underneath. I was afraid that that might be an issue because you still wanna have some kind of surface that has a little bit of give. So in order to remedy this, I have the almighty newspaper that is going to help us a little bit. Um, it's always a good idea to cover your work surfaces anyways, especially once you get into fabric because you might have bleed through. So, um, but I'm going to do this as newspaper and I'm actually going to put it um, underneath my cutting mat. So that way that's where the give is. And so that way you can't see all of the, the folds. Because if you were to just put a piece of cardboard down on the table, because cardboard is great, if you were to just put down a piece of cardboard on the table, you would end up with um, the, the corrugated pattern inside of the cardboard, which is, you know, a thing. And not everybody wants to have that corrugated effect on their block prints. So... I'm gonna charge my stamp again. That's what they call it when you uh, put more ink on your stamp. You charge your stamp. And I'm going to invert the pattern and go like here and stamp away. Ooh, I like this one a lot better. Because it means that I can push down hard, 
with all of my fingers individually and I don't, I'm not getting the curl in from the, the mat that I was on. But I can still feel that there's a little bit of give. And that is a much better print. So that came out gorgeous. Um, so now I can progress onward now that I've gotten my beautiful demo there done. And I can go through and I can say, oh, this is lovely. I'm going to move on to fabric. Dun, dun, dun. Do we have any questions so far? I'm talking really fast. Okay. Good. Doesn't look like there are any questions yet. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So this is pre-washed cotton um, in a fabulous lime green, just for you. Um, this happens to be a scrap piece from another garment that I had lying around um, that was inside of my scrap bin that I was like, oh, this will be perfect for block printing. This is amazing. I can use this. So this is my piece. And when you go through and you put your charger, and every time I go to charge, I am rolling my roller on my, um, and I'm just using um, construction tiles from a hardware store. So like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, and because uh, uh, they're, you know, 50 cents a piece. And they wash really good and I use water-based inks. So it means that I can just toss them in the sink and they wash off real great. Um, in case anybody was interested. You can go and buy all the fancy tools to make all of this work and, you know, power to you. But when I started out with all of this stuff, I was on a budget and then people started asking me to do classes and my idea of a block printing class is less watch me do it and more here are things to do hands on. So I proceeded to end up with lots of paint rollers for trim and tiles and um, ink samples so that, that way everybody could try. So um, I'm sorry you can't try at home because I can't give you my supplies. But you should be able to know how to do this now. Um, so theoretically, if I were going to do this, and this were part of a project, I would have gone through and laid out what my lines were for all of this. And um, this fabric is not going to be great. But um, with dark fabrics, you can use chalk. And so um, I just go through and do chalk. And you lay out, you know, how what, what's your grid pattern? And, you know, obviously I would use a ruler and figure out where everything was. So that, that way, when I went through and printed it, so I would go through and do one print. Um, and you want to do a press down, or if it's a, if you're, if you really want to get your aggression out on the world, you would have like a rubber mallet, or in my case, the bottom of a paint jar, and you just stamp it away. And there it is. And it makes for a nice even block. Um, we also need to recognize that because this is medieval block printing, not every stamp will come out perfect every time. And so that is part of the aesthetic of block printing is that you need to go through and recognize that modern perfection is not going to be a thing that you're going to see in your block printing. So some of your stamps are going to be a little lighter in some places and some of your stamps are going to be a little darker in some places. And if you accidentally get too much ink on one versus another, then it'll look that way. So there's that there. Look at the fuzzy scene that's doing. Um, so there's that. Um, things that I have seen people do that I don't necessarily recommend is to use your tile like a stamp pad. So you would take your stamp and you would put it here and you would stamp it here first and then stamp it on your project. I don't know that you would get consistent results, 
um, you could probably get a couple of good results, but I don't know that you would get consistent results. Because part of the reason why you, you use a brayer or you use your um, roller is so that that way you get an even spin on it. So, and as you can see, my third one where I use it as a stamp, um, straight on to straight on, came out much lighter. Um, so I don't know that I got quite as much ink as it really needed. Um, one of the other things that I see is that people have too much ink. And I get the feeling that what ended up happening was is they scooped a bunch of ink into their space and then they rollered it and they're expecting it to be the consistency of like house paint before you paint your house. And that is too much. You know, you want it to be basically a very fine layer um, that's even and consistent and gives you that, that tacky sound when you brayer it. And you can kind of see the ink move. I need a little bit more ink on my tablet here, but I'm basically got all of the stuff. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to go over in terms of troubleshooting for block printing on fabric. Are there any other questions, thoughts, ideas, problems that you've had, stuff that you'd like to go over? Conundrums? Nobody's typed one yet, um, but I actually had a question, Melissa. Um, as far as fabric goes, what fabrics have you found that, um, that work versus fabrics that don't work? So and I, then I've got another question that somebody just typed after that. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So I have found um, that the best fabrics are um, uh, cottons. So, you know, you're 100% commercial quilting cottons um, and uh, linen. I do lots of stuff on linen. It comes out really well. Um, even some of the linen blends, like when you get the linen cotton blends, those work really well. Those natural fibers. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to do it on knits because knits stretch by themselves. So even if you did get successful prints because you were doing it on a jersey, which is a cotton, you would still end up with distorting your print over time because it's a, it's a knit. Um, I've seen people do it on wool. I am very impressed when they do it on wool and I would think that you have to do a, an oil-based ink in order to make wool work. Um, and there is no shame in taking a paintbrush and going back over the spots that you wanted to fill in because it didn't come out nearly as clear as you wanted. Um, there's also the technique of, well, let's stencil it. Um, so, cause that's a, that's a big thing that people do also is, oh, hey, I have a stencil. Let me lay the stencil down, tape it, and then paint it with a paintbrush. And that works too, you know, or paint it with a roller. Um, you absolutely can do that. Uh, um, I think the other question that I saw was heat settings. And so for, um, so I've done this, it's gorgeous. Because it's water-based, I do need to heat set it. So I will heat set this with, um, I'll get my hot iron on the linen or the cotton setting, depending upon what fabric it is that I'm using, and I'll press it continuously for about 30 seconds, and then I'll toss it in a hot dryer, and that's pretty much heat set for me. Um, I do machine wash these. I don't do it very often, but my, I have a, I have a tunic that I've, um, that I initially block printed, um, three years ago, four years ago, that you can still see all of the details in the, the stamp that I used um, on it, which is a lot of fun. So, um, anything else? Did that answer the heat set question? Um, Matthew just, uh, uh, just said that he'd love to le learn more about period style and examples. Well, it depends on which period. So I do a lot of Greek stuff and a lot of my um, uh, I do a dry iron. Um, a lot of ma but steam works, I think it depends on what you want to do because this is, um, as I interrupt myself, that's fine. Um, water base, no offensive smells, use a nylon. 
So this is specifically for fabric, right? So this is a fabric paint and it is, but it's for um, screen printing. Um, and apparently I lost the box that says how to hot properly heat set because it does say that it's water fast once it's heat set. Um, I usually use a dry iron just because I don't have steam in my iron and so it seems to work that way, but I have, Sometimes I toss a damp towel into the dryer while I'm drying these after I do it. Um, pure extent examples for block printing. Um, because I'm ancient Greek, a lot of my block printing is supposition. I'm, a, I'm supposing that after they spent umpteen gajillion the hours weaving the fabric on a warp weighted loom, which is wall and has rocks on the bottom and is huge, um, that you know, if they wanted a consistent pattern that they, you know, and they were selling it, they would be um, uh, block printed. Um, I use all modern inks. There are a number of period inks that you can go through and do. Um, so Scala out of Dragon's Lair um, has actually made her own black walnut pit or um, peach pit ink. She, she did it so that she could say that she did it and she was like, never again. Um, because it was very intense that she had to go through and do it. Um, the printed textiles in the Middle Ages, that Facebook page has all kinds of resources. If you are looking for period inks or period designs and patterns, depending upon which region of the world you're from or um, where to go to find all of that information. So if you're interested in Ottoman prints versus French versus German, they've, they know where they all are and they know how to find them all. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of mine I get off of base paintings. So that's where I get my resources. Uh, Matthew was wondering if there is an ink that would be best for napkins. Um, so, I, you know, honestly, I do either your craft acrylics, right? So you do your little craft acrylic bottles. Or I would do the the silk printing. The challenge with the the silk screen ink, um, or see if you can find actual fabric um, speedball block printing ink because I know it exists out there, but I think it's oil based. Um, is the the um, you know so I would go with with these ones here. Make sure you heat set them, and then just recognize that by the tenth time you use them, the print is going to be pretty faded. And so it would be either time to reprint them or to dye them and reprint them or to make it into something else at that point in time. So um, that's the, my would suggestion. You, sorry, would you mind if I, uh, if I interjected a thing? Because I actually did napkins. Oh, yeah, do you? Yeah, interject. Yes. So uh, this is uh, Disa, by the way. <laughs> um, so I did napkins um, and I used Speedball, but I used the fabric block printing ink and it's, it's oil-based. Um, so it, it, it doesn't, you don't have to heat set it, but it takes, I would say it definitely takes longer than 24 hours um, to dry. Uh, so it takes quite a while. And, 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 you know, like Melissa said, if, if you're, you know, if you don't have a lot of space to do it, you know, leaving a bunch of fabric laying out with cats is a challenge, right? But, um, but for napkins, this stuff works really nicely. Um, and we've washed ours several times and there's been no fading at all. So with the oil-based, um, the Speedball Fabric Block Printing Ink is what it's called. Yes. Speedball's got good stuff. And it comes in a variety of colors because uh, Disa did hers in green and purple, which are not colors that I currently possess, right? So all of my stuff is primary colors predominantly. Um, and so far that's worked for what I've needed, but at this point in time, I've done a lot more classes than I've printed my own stuff. So we'll see what happens. Um, I just did my cleanup for my roller. I put it in a plastic bag. Now my plastic bag is gonna go inside of my storage space. Um, this is gonna go in the sink and it's gonna get washed off because it's water-based, so that makes that really easy. Um, and the same with my stamp, uh, is that my stamp is gonna go into the sink and they're gonna get washed off and, and they're water-based. Um, that is one reason why I do the water-based is because it's easy cleanup, which means that when I offer it as a class and people come and they try and use my stamps, um, 
it makes way easier stuff. Um, so there's that. Any other questions? There's another question here. Oh. Uh, when uh, Mary says, when making a garment, do you prefer stamping the fabric then cutting or stamping the garment after it's cut out? So it depends on what kind of garment you're doing. So if you are doing like trim on the bottom of a dress, right? I, the first time I did this, I did it as stamped it on the finished garment. Um, if you are doing it as a, like I want a repeating pattern over the entirety of my dress, right? Like say I want ermine spots on my whole dress. Um, that's an instance of where I would um, have the fabric, I might not have cut the fabric yet, but I'll at least know where the cut lines are on the fabric and then stamp it in the direction that I want everything to happen. So that way I know that my ermine spots all go in the correct direction of the fabric that I'm putting on and that like my ermine spots on my sleeves go down instead of across or, um, you know, and, and that way you can also position and make sure that, you know, for us ladies, that we're not putting ermine spots in those target areas, uh, cause that's a thing. Um, so we want to make sure that we're aware of that. Um, it also depends on the size of the print that you're doing. So if you're doing a block print that is this size, Right? I haven't actually used this one yet, but I have a pretty big block print, Triscoll, that is this size. And, you know, I want to make sure that when I'm printing my fabric, that it goes, you know, across the top and then maybe in the middle and then across the bottom. So that way I don't end up with targets on my gown because nobody wants targets on their gown. Anything else? <laughs> I enjoyed doing this. I hope it was worth your while. Um, this was pretty good, half hour talk. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to post them on the event page and um, I am more than willing to answer them. Um, again, this has been an art experience. Um, this has been troubleshooting block printing. Um, this is Lord Victor Crane and I am Melissa Adalmeda out of Glumere and thank you for joining us.